Hello everybody and today I am reviewing the brand new Rotelink Wireless Filmmaker Kit. Hello everybody, my name is ZY and this is the Rotelink Wireless Filmmaker Kit. Now the kit basically includes three main elements, the transmitter, the receiver and also it includes a lavalier microphone. Now before we get into anything, let's first take a look at the build of these units. Now the receiver and transmitter units look pretty much the same. There are a few little differences here and there, but they're very similarly constructed. I would say the receiver is slightly heavier than the transmitter. However, they both feel reasonably solid. It has mostly a plastic construction, but they do feel nice and solid in the hands. And this front panel part here is made from slightly softer plastic. It almost has a rubbery feel. I suppose this is where the antennas are housed, but that's just my guess. The battery door, you can slide out the battery door by pressing this release button over here. And it slides out in two stages. You slide it out in one stage, it reveals the control buttons, and then you can slide it out furthermore to reveal the batteries. Now the battery door doesn't completely come off. You cannot take the door completely off. It does wobble a bit when it's fully extended, but that's really no big deal. Now both these units come with a belt clip, which is to my knowledge non-removable. So both these units can be belt mounted and the belt clip is made from metal, so it should be pretty durable. Now the hot shoe mount comes pre-attached on the receiver unit. So it has a plastic hot shoe mount. It is removable, however, if you plan to remove or mount the hot shoe mount back, it is attached to the unit using a screw, so you will need to have a screwdriver at the ready if you plan to remove or mount the unit. There is an extra hot shoe mount included with the kit for you to mount it to your transmitter as well in case you ever want to mount your transmitter onto any hot shoe. Now it's mounted to the back of the unit via these two little metal screw threads. Now there are two positions for the screw threads so you can either have the mount slightly towards the front that's about the center or you can have it slightly towards the back. Rubber covers for the screw threads for mounting the hot shoe mounts are included. However, my advice would be to leave them off because they do come off extremely easily. So if you were to use them to actually protect your screw threads, you'll probably lose them in the field pretty soon. So my advice would be to just keep them in a safe place if you don't want to lose them. In fact, I don't really see the need to protect these little screw threads over here. So it's no big deal really. The hot shoe mount is a pretty special one because it is a circular hot shoe mount. That means instead of the rectangular hot shoe mount you usually get with flashes, this hot shoe mount is in the shape of a circle. This means when you mount it on top of your camera, because it's circular, you can actually angle the unit in any direction you want before locking it down. Now both the 3.5mm jacks on the receiver and the transmitter have locking jacks. So if you're using it with compatible accessories, you can lock down the 3.5mm connections. Now kudos to Rode because they do have on-camera usage kept in mind when they designed the receiver unit. So if you were to mount the receiver on top of your camera, you'll notice that the 3.5mm jack is on the left side of the unit, which is on the same side as your mic input jack on most cameras. So you won't have your cables all around the place. Everything will be nicely on the left side if I were to connect it to my camera's microphone jack. So everything is nice and neat. This cable is also included with the kit. More about this cable later on. Now both the units are powered using two AA batteries each. So that means you'll need a total of four batteries to get the system going. However, if you look on the side of both units, both units have a micro USB port on the side. So you can actually USB power these two units as well. So if you happen to have the power bank for your smartphone, you can plug that into the micro USB port of the receiver or the transmitter to power these two units using USB. Now if you slide down the battery door slightly, you can see there are control switches hidden underneath. Now on the right hand side of the control switches is a red pairing button. And the control switches you get on the receiver is actually a pad control. So the pad is available in 0 decibels, minus 10 and minus 20 decibels. And on the transmitter, you actually get a boost of 0, plus 10 or plus 20 decibels. So on the transmitter side, if the mic has a very low output, you can apply a boost to boost the signal of your input. And if the signal is coming in a bit hot, you can apply a pad to bring down the amplitude on your receiver end so your audio doesn't clip. So this is a very nice feature to have a boost on the transmitter and a pad on the receiver. Now the user interface on the receiver end is slightly more complex than the user interface on the transmitter end. So let's begin with the receiver end. 
So on the back of the unit, we have a very gorgeous looking monochrome OLED screen, which displays the current audio level, the channel information and the battery information of both the receiver unit and the transmitter unit. So you can actually remotely monitor the battery status of the transmitter from the receiver, which is a great feature to have. So you can always have an idea of how the battery is holding up on the transmitter so it won't die on you all of a sudden. Now the screen does go into standby mode quite soon after some inactivity in order to save power. When it does that, it brings the luminosity of the screen down and you'll be left with only the battery information of the receiver and transmitters on the screen. The rest will be disabled. And on the right hand side of the display, we have a nice big power button with an indicator LED. When the LED is green, that means it's powered on and it's functioning normally. And when it's red, it means the system is muted. And when it's flashing red, that means the signal is clipping. On the other side of the screen, we have a channel button and a mute button. The channel button is obviously for selecting the channel and the mute button will mute the system. Now onto the transmitter unit, it's a much more simpler design. On the top, there is the 3.5mm input jack and we have a simple LED display on the side which displays only the channel number. In the middle, we have our big power button with the indicator LED as well, which functions in the same way, except this time the power button also doubles as the mute button. So if I were to give the power button a quick press, it would unmute the system. So you can see the LED will turn green and if I press it again, it will mute the system. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention on the front of the unit, there is a big, huge TX and RX written on the transmitter and receiver respectively, so you can tell which one is which. Now included with the kit is this cute little 3.5mm cable. Now both the 3.5mm jacks are at right angles and one of the sides has a locking knob. So this is the side you presumably plug into your receiver and lock it down. The other side is for you to connect to your camera's microphone input jack or your audio recorder. Also included is a lavalier microphone that comes in a very nice fake leather pouch with Rode microphones written on it. So the lavalier microphone is 1.2 meters long, just the right length in my opinion. And the cable, as claimed by Rode, is Kevlar reinforced and can withstand weights of up to 10 kilograms. So I suppose this should be very durable and it shouldn't be breaking anytime soon. The lavalier microphone terminates to the Rode Micon connection system. So it does come with a Micon 1 connector, which terminates to a 3.5mm locking jack. But if you ever need other connections for your lavalier microphone, you can always buy that respective Micon head and connect it to the lavalier microphone's Micon connector. So that saves you from all those clunky adapters, but then you do need to spend extra money on the Micon connector. Oh well. So the lavalier microphone does come with two windshields. One of them, they call it the pop filter, which is really just a standard foam windshield. And the other one is the furry windshield, which is huge, but then it works very well for windy situations. So you can just slot the lavalier microphone into these windshields and they fit in very nice and snug. So they will not come off by accident. It's a pretty tight fit. And it also comes with the alligator clip. So you can clip it onto your shirt. So the Roblink system works on up to eight channels and the channel is actually set on the receiver unit. Now the way you set the channel is you have to first press the red pairing button. If not, the channel button does absolutely nothing before you press the red pairing button. So after I press the red pairing button, the channel number is going to start flashing and I see this little Wi-Fi signal icon thing here. And then I can change my channel using the channel button. So let's say I want to go to channel one. So I'll just cycle to channel one. And then on my transmitter unit, I press the red pairing button. So after I press the red pairing button on the transmitter, the transmitter is actually going to scan for receivers that are currently in pairing mode as well, and then detect the channel the receiver is on and then it automatically pairs themselves. So it's a pretty automatic process, no setting frequencies on yourself, it's pretty automatic. And also another notable feature is that the muting system works on two ways. That means you can mute and unmute the system from both the receiver and the transmitter. So let's say I have the receiver mounted on top of my camera and my talent is wearing the transmitter. So say if my talent has accidentally left the transmitter on mute, so there's no sound at all coming from the system. So instead of having to reach over to my talent to press the mute toggle button on his belt pack transmitter to unmute the system, I can simply do so from my receiver by simply pressing the mute toggle button to unmute the system. I can press it from here to mute the entire system again, and he can do the same from his end by pressing the power button to mute and unmute the entire system. 
So this is a very nice feature to have, the ability to remotely mute and unmute from both ends of the system. All right, so now that I'm done showing you around the road link, let's actually set this up and show you what it sounds like. All right, so now the audio you're listening to right now is through the Rode Link wireless system. I'm wearing the provided lavalier microphone with the pop filter, which is the foam windshield, plugged into the transmitter right here. And the receiver is mounted on top of my Canon EOS 70D and it's plugged directly into the camera. So this is what it sounds like through the system. Now the final audio quality you'll actually hear out of the unit actually depends on what you plug it into. So if you were to say plug it directly into your camera, for example, like what I'm doing right here, I'm plugging it directly into my 70D, the audio quality might be degraded slightly because the built-in preamps in your cameras aren't exactly the best. So the noise floor may be higher and the overall audio quality you'll get may not be as good as if you were to say, plug it into a dedicated audio recorder like this Zoom H6 over here. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm now going to disconnect the receiver from my 70D and I'm going to plug that into my Zoom H6 and switch the audio over to the recording from the Zoom H6. All right, so I've now plugged my Rode Link receiver into my Zoom H6 and the audio you're listening to right now is recorded internally on the H6. Now the difference is probably very minimal, but I will definitely say that the H6 has better preamps than the in-camera preamps on my 70D. All right, so now the actual audio quality from the lavalier microphone, you're listening to it right now. It is very decent and you will get very nice and clear audio out of it. The dialogue sounds pretty clear and it's definitely, definitely very usable. So it's a pretty good quality lavalier microphone. Now, another thing I wanted to test about the road link was if I pass an audio signal through the system, will it actually degrade or alter the signal in any way? So to test that, I plugged a microphone into my Zoom H6 and I connected the transmitter of the road link to the line out of the H6. So the H6 is simultaneously outputting to my transmitter. And then I connected my receiver to my audio interface that's connected via USB to my PC. I then spoke into the microphone and I recorded the signal both internally on my H6 and also on my PC through the audio interface. So the audio from the H6 is directly from the microphone. It has not been passed through the Rode Link system, whereas the audio on my PC has been passed through the Rode Link wireless system. So after that, I compared both the clips, the internal recording on the H6 and also the recording I've done on my PC that has been passed through the Rode Link. Now the audio signal that has been passed through the Rode Link, I noticed there was no extra noise and there was no loss in dynamic range. And in terms of amplitude, if the boost and pad are left at zero decibels, then the output you get out of the road link is as loud as your input. So it is a lossless transmission. What you're getting out of the system is practically the same as what went in. Now the operating range of the road link is rated up to 100 meters. Of course, this is under optimum circumstances. There are many factors that can lower the range of the transmission. So it does operate on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. So that means it is susceptible to interference from mobile phones and Wi-Fi signals. So the range may be reduced when interference is present. Now, apart from that, if there are physical objects in between the receiver and transmitter, that can degrade the range as well, especially walls. So if you're using this indoors, particularly where there are a lot of walls and corners, then the range will be greatly reduced. So now let's actually take this outdoors and see how the road link performs outdoors. I also considered doing a range test. However, I was unfortunately unable to find a wide open space that was at least 100 meters apart to test the maximum range of the road link under optimum circumstances. So unfortunately, I'm not able to do the maximum range test on this. But anyway, let's still take this outside and see how this performs outdoors. All right, so I am now outdoors with the Rode Link Filmmaker kit. I'm using the included lavalier microphone with the furry windshield. I am also wearing the belt pack transmitter and the receiver is mounted on top of my camera and it's plugged directly in. I'm recording using a 5D Mark III. So this is all recorded internally using the 5D Mark III. So I am now about a good 40 meters away from the camera. This is the biggest open space I can find. This is the furthest away I can get from the camera with line of sight because I live in a pretty small place. So just to give you a sense of how far I am, let's zoom out. So yes, this is about how far I am away from my camera. And as you can see, the road link is still holding up pretty well. So let's zoom back in. So the road link is rated for up to 100 meters, but unfortunately I'm not able to test that today because I don't have a large enough open space to test that while maintaining line of sight with the receiver. 
So right now I have my belt pack transmitter facing towards the camera and the receiver on my camera is also pointing forward so as to maximize the clarity of the signal. So this is the Roadlink Filmmaker Kit outdoors. All right, so the Roadlink is a relatively new product and I have no idea what Rode has in mind down the road for this product. However, after using it for some time now, I kind of wish it had a XLR transmitter as well, just like what Sennheiser did with their G3 system. So if they had an XLR unit, you could just pop a XLR microphone onto the transmitter and you would receive that using the Roadlink receiver. So that would definitely be a very great addition to the Roadlink wireless systems. So I hope Rode does do that sometime in the future. But nonetheless, the Roadlink is still a very nice and useful tool. It is a very great audio transmitter and it is pretty reliable. It delivers very great performance and at a very reasonable price point. So if you're looking for a good audio transmitter, definitely the Roadlink is something to consider. So the Roadlink is definitely a great addition to the wireless audio market. So that's pretty much it about the Roadlink Wireless Filmmaker Kit. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram at ZY Productions, and you can also pop over to my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Productions. So that is pretty much it for today, everybody. If you have any questions, any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.